Congratulations on finishing your course. That was some hard work. Now what do I do with it? Is there anyone that will house my course and help me sell it? What if I can get an entire team to help me sell my course that I worked so hard on? Have I got a discovery for you? The Great Discovery not only has a place for your course, but a network of affiliates that are eager to sell your hard-earned course creation. Want to make a little more money so you can build your course or invest in yourself? Opportunities for all this and more await you at The Great Discovery. Or go to tuepodcast.net backslash discovery for more information. Once again, that's tuepodcast.net backslash discovery for more information about how to join The Great Discovery now. This is an Undiscovered Legacy production. Undiscovered Entrepreneur, episode number 73. My favorite number. (laughs) Well, I think it's Jack Canfield that says everything we want is on the other side of fear. And so once you step into it, and it's like anything else, right? The first time you rode a bike as a kid, I'm sure you didn't get on that bicycle and just sail away. Maybe with training wheels, training wheels, but even then you probably had a tumble or two. It wasn't perfect. So any time we try something new, anytime we learn a new skill, it's not going to be perfect initially. We have to practice and do it again and get comfortable being uncomfortable. To the Undiscovered Entrepreneur, the podcast where brand new entrepreneurs come to life and could quite possibly be discovered. Join me, DJ Scoob, and the rest of the Scoob Believers as we help these new businesses become a reality. And now, away we go! Hello, Scoop Believers, and welcome to episode number 73, my favorite number, 73, of the Undiscovered Entrepreneur, and it's me, DJ Scoob, (laughs) coming at you whatever device you have to be listening on. Okay, we're going to talk about the Scoob Believer of the Week, and the Scoob Believer of the Week is none other than Vintage Deco. They are on TikTok, and they actually have a whole TikTok, it's amazing, all kinds of vintage electronic equipment. Uh, sound equipment. It's amazing. You got to check it out. So thank you, Vintage Deco, for being a scoop believer. If you want to check them out, check them down in the show notes where I have a link to his TikTok. Okay, today we are talking to Leslie. Now, Leslie is an aspiring entrepreneur and coach, and we discuss her coaching practice, different ways of overcoming fear, accountability, and coaching. Uh, We have book recommendations and setting goals for our businesses. The interview also emphasizes the importance of us surrounding ourselves with positive influence, facing fears, taking action, and holding oneself accountable for our goals. So let's listen to Leslie. Salutations, school believers, and we're here again with another brand spanking new entrepreneur. Today, we're here with Leslie. Hi, Leslie. How are you? Hey, Jesse. I'm fantastic. How about you? I am fantastic. Thank you so much for coming on The Undiscovered Entrepreneur. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day. I appreciate the opportunity, so thank you. Oh, gee, shucks, thanks. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so I have one kind of semi-serious question to ask you. Okay, are you ready, Leslie? Yes. All right. Are you a school believer? Absolutely. All right. Thank you so much for being a school believer, Leslie. I appreciate you. All right, Leslie. So just tell me a little bit about who you are and what your entrepreneur venture is and how long you've been doing it for. Sure. So I live in the greater Grand Rapids, Michigan area. I launched my coaching practice in, I filed my paperwork in October, did my first group a session in November and have worked with a few other clients individually and I'm excited to think about prospects that I've connected with recently. So hopefully we're going to get the bandwagon rolling. Let's see, what do you want to know? I help people who are reluctant to speak in public 
to say coaches and consultants that struggle with self-promotion because they fear public speaking, they're camera shy, or they don't know about networking or don't like networking. Mm -hmm. And I think networking is a great way to grow a business. In my opinion, it beats cold calling any day. Oh, yes. So that's what I'm about. Yeah, I used to be a car salesman, so cold calling was definitely a lot of what what I did, and it was oh, not sure. my favorite thing to do. <laughs> I don't. Well, there are people who like it, and there are people who teach it fairly effectively. I just prefer the method of referral marketing. Well, it seems to be a lot better because you get your leads are a lot warmer that way. I mean, yes. they'll be yeah. they'll even be expecting you to call because they were told, "Hey, this is the person you want to get a hold of if you hear from them," or however. It's going to work out a lot better. Your your credibility is a lot better because you already have the idea. They have the idea that this person's good because my friend told me it was they were yeah. a good fit. So absolutely, awesome. yeah. And it's funny to me how uh, networking has changed over the last few years with COVID. Uh, COVID being such a bad thing, so many good things came out of COVID too. We learned a different way of network marketing. Not just having going to a place and shaking actual hands, but reaching out virtually to people has been such an amazing thing for me. I don't think I would be able to do the, what I'm doing now if it wasn't for me learning how to network with people virtually. I think that's the true for a lot of folks. But what's interesting to me is how many people don't want to show up on camera. They have every excuse in the book. And some of them are legit. I get it, right? But most of the time, I want to be able to see you. I had a friend who sells business health plans. She's a benefits broker. And she was telling me about a proposal she had with a company. Now, one of the clients that she was pitching to would get on camera. Mm. She said, I didn't know if I was really talking to actual people or not. She said it was just a sea of blank names, like names on the Zoom screen. She said it was so bizarre. Yeah, it's hard to talk to just names. I'd much rather be in person, but at least on camera, you can gauge reactions. You can see people. And if, if you can't see them, I mean, if I can't see you and talk to you, how the heck am I going to get to know you or even refer you? Why would I want to refer you if I felt like you weren't going to put your best foot forward and give my client your best treatment? And the only way I think we can do that is when we show up on camera and we participate in the event. Exactly. And you know what, Leslie, that's exactly what I was going to say. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Okay. <laughs> I'll get off my soapbox no, now. No, that's okay. We like the soapbox. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. You, you can't gauge people's expressions. You can't engage in people's, if they're actually even listening to, they could be off doing something else while they're listening and not really listening. Right. And they uh, two things I'd like to hit real quick that you really that kind of hit my heart a little bit mm -hmm. is you talk about fear. Now, if anybody listens to my podcast, I'm big about fear and what fear. Do you know what the acronym for fear is by chance? Well, first attempt at learning. That's fail. Fail. Oh, OK. No, false expectations appearing real. Close. That's very, very false uh, experiences. Yeah, you're right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> false. I, I put false evidence appearing. Real, oh, evidence. Yours, okay. Yours works too. Yeah, there's an E in there. So <laughs> good. And and it's something I talk about a lot too. But you also say people use every excuse in the book. Now I was actually on another podcast a while back, and we talked about how excuses were fears minions. <laughs> oh, that's a really good. Yeah, and, they are. And people use excuses to hide from the fear. So whenever I hear excuses, I think of the little yellow guys with the one eyeball, the running around. Uh -huh. yeah. Those are the minions of fear. So whenever we fear something, we always look to the minions to do our dirty work, right? Yes. So Absolutely. we use these excuses to get out of things that we're not comfortable with. Yeah. So we really have to learn to get out of that comfort zone, stop using the minion excuses, and just face the fear. And you never know what's on the other side of that fear. Well, I think it's Jack Canfield that says everything we want is on the other side of fear. And so once you step into it, and it's like anything else, right? The first time you rode a bike as a kid, I'm sure you didn't get on that bicycle and just sail away, maybe with training wheels, training wheels, but even then you probably had a tumble or two. It wasn't perfect. So any 
time we try something new, anytime we learn a new skill, it's not going to be perfect initially. We have to practice and do it again and get comfortable being uncomfortable. Exactly. The first time you try something out, I call it the ugly baby because it always turns out ugly. Yeah. yeah. Right. But yeah. we have to expect that because we're just learning something new. It's just start at the start of the of the learning curve, as they say. So, it's, yeah, it's going to be ugly. But at least you took that first step into trying something. And yes. that's one of the other points that I always make in my podcast is getting started. I can, I am, I will. And I'm doing it today is, is my tagline. Mm-hmm. And it's all about getting started now. Yeah. Well, the only impossible journey is the one you never begin. Exactly. And then we regret not doing it later on in life because you never know what would have been on the other side of that. Oh, I know. It's just sad that people, well, and and it's interesting what you were talking about when excuses are the, the minions. What is the, I think Tony Robbins talks about if you can have excuses or you can have results, but you can't have both. Yes, exactly. 100%. Thank you, Tony, for that one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So what I'd like to know here is what actually made you start your business? I mean, you're you're doing coaching now and you're helping people get over the fear of, of speaking in public and showing their face on in public. But what actually was a catalyst to get that started for you? Well, I have been in corporate America for a long time. And I this is my third uh, attempt at growing up a business. Uh, I launched a, a friend of mine, uh, the, or she got to be a friend, as I certified in her coaching program, gave my notice to my full-time job March 2nd of 2020. Well, when the world fell apart two weeks later, she came to me and she said, I just had $100,000 of business walk out my door. This is not going to work for us. I'm like, I get it. I So I followed around for a year, not really with clear direction, and then was offered a full-time position that I currently still hold and growing my coaching practice alongside of that with the intention of leaving that at some point in the near future and focusing full-time on my job. So, But to really answer your question, Jesse, it was something that I could not leave alone. I just, as much as I tried to really put myself into this role that I have and like it, and my husband's just, just do it, just, just figure it out. And just, I'm like, I just, it won't leave me. This feeling that I need to be doing this on my own will not go away as much as I've tried. So I just had to go with it and step into it. Sometimes that happens to us. That's it, it's a common occurrence, really, more than you really think. It's it's something that kind of reverberates in your head as time goes on, and it just keeps bugging. You, like, I got to do this. Well, I, what? No, you got to do this now. Well, what about? No, you got to do this now. <laughs> well, it's like you said, we regret what we don't step into, and I didn't want to look back and say, "Gosh, I wish I would have." Exactly. So I, I'm just moving forward and seeing where it goes and having a fun adventure and. So I try to look at things like, how how can I make this fun? How can I make this exciting? How can I be the most help I can be to my clients and have and have help them have fun and enjoy the process along the way? And when it's coming across your mind over and over again, that it's in your zone of genius, because it's something you just can't get rid of in your head. Yeah. And then when you do actually come across somebody that you get to coach, you get to talk to, and you see that result, you get, you get that nice warm fuzzy feeling in your chest and that you help somebody else out. That's how you know it's in your zone of genius. Yeah. So you said that you, you're looking forward to to quitting your full-time job. Have you set a date for that yet? by chance? Yes, I have, but my employer doesn't know that. And I don't know if anybody there will listen. So I don't want <laughs> they don't have to. They don't have to know as long as that's the important thing. As yeah. long as you have set in yourself, this is the goal that I have for myself yeah. that when I'm going to quit my job. I did the exact same thing too. And I actually have it posted on my wall. It, it's so on a sticky note. So yes. So I have. bigger than a sticky note. I have oh. it on. I, I have, mine's <laughs> like this. But yeah, it's important to set that date because until you set that date, it's not going to be real. Right. No, I, I, that's, yes, that's true. So I did. Good. Good. Congratulations. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. 
As you were getting started and, and things are starting to pick up progression and things are getting a little better, what kind of pitfalls or struggles have you come across getting started in, in your entrepreneur adventure? Well, for me, it's because there's so many people out there that want to help online. And well, yeah, mostly in the online spaces, I'm been checking out different social media platforms and talking to different people. It's like everybody wants to be of help and there's an offer. Uh, so it's really trying to stay focused on the program that I'm engaged with because I hired a coach. To, I enrolled in a coaching program to help me build my coaching practice. And so following those instructions and not getting it, not getting distracted. And, the, there's, nothing, and there's nothing wrong with a coach hiring a coach. Actually, oh. I, I think it's like almost essential because it proves that you, you like or that coaching is important enough to where you have your own coach. Yes. I mean, if you were, if, why would you coach with someone that wasn't, that didn't have a, that doesn't make any sense to me. If you're following a prescription, you got to do the, what the, follow your own advice. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and you come across this too, a lot, especially in the coaching industry. That A lot of people will say that the market is saturated. Mm. Is a bad thing, but I do not think market saturation is a bad thing. I think market saturation is actually a good thing because it's for a fact that it's already proven that it works because there's yeah. other people doing it. If not a bunch of people, other people were doing it, then why would you do it? Because it's not working. Exactly. Well, and I also know that people were not right for everybody. I mean, I'm not the coach for everybody, but I can find my tribe and connect with the people that resonate with me. And I, I mean, it's a good fit. That's about the, the the initial conversation is always about, does this make sense? Is it a fit? And then are you willing to do the work? Because coaching is about, I believe, uh, the coach draws out from you what's already in you, but you've got to do the work. It's not therapy. I mean, if you're going to a therapist, you have to do the work there too, but it is different. And it's, a compelling reason to hire a coach is to help you get to that next level. You can read and books are great. You can watch videos, watch YouTube, and all of the information is out there. The biggest challenge I think people have, though, is implementing that information. And that's where a coach can help. Well, I like to say a lot of times, too, when you have a coach, they can look at it's It's hard to see the label from inside the bottle. I mean, let's let's face it. Yes. And you could do all this work, but nobody, you only see your eyes from out this way, yes. but you have to be able to have somebody see you from this way and see what it looks like from the outside. So we could read the ingredients. So we could read the, the ounces on the, on the label per se, and yes. that kind of thing. Because if you don't have that perspective, you're not going to be, it's just not going to work. You got to have the perspective of in and out and out and in. I mean, it's, it, that's just the only way it's going to work. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You're right. Okay. As you're going, going along, you've actually mentioned a couple of people already, but do you have any influences or people that kind of help you drive forward? I mean, we talked a little bit about Tony Robbins already, and you said you had a coach, but anybody else that you think that might help you move forward? Well, just surrounding myself with people who are positive, who are other uh, school believers, maybe, or <laughs> servant leaders, uh, but folks that want to do something above and beyond and really make a difference. So from a variety of perspectives, but in talking to people who are positive, who are upbeat, not that they don't have challenges because we all have challenges, but working through those challenges and they're not afraid to step out and share their message in a confident, positive way. That's what I want to help my clients do. So I want to surround myself with people who are in that same uh, frame of mind, I guess I'll say. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. We are the combination of the five people that we hang around most, right? So yes. when we pick out those five people, we got to be sure that they're in line with what what we what we are and what we do, and that way we could get along with them, and then therefore they feel comfortable enough. If they do have a challenge or a problem, they could come to you and say, "Hey, can you help me with this?" Or the other way around, if you have a problem or your challenge, you can go to them and say, "Hey, I have this issue. Can you help me with it?" 
And you got to be, be able to be comfortable doing that with these five people. And yes, keep them positive. Keep them people that are going to hold you accountable for what you're doing and move you forward and that kind of thing. And and people who are just a, a, ahead of where I want to go, they're, you know, just they're they're doing things now that I want to do in the future so I can learn from them. Exactly. And it gives you that edge where you want to move, be where they're at a little bit. Yes. You don't want them so far ahead where they're out of reach either. But yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I love like Tony Robbins and his work, but there's no way. I mean, I would ex- I'm not at that level, right? There's people like him and Mel Mel Robbins. I don't think there's any relation, but you know, people that are really out there have a huge network and doing amazing things, and that's great. Um, but I don't. They're not. I will. I doubt that I'll ever be at that level. If that makes any sense. Now, somebody out there is probably saying, well, you're not setting your bar high enough. Well, yeah, but I don't, the business I want to create is a lifestyle business for me. And it's a business that will allow me some more flexibility in my schedule. I have no desire to create a multi-million dollar empire and hire all kinds of people. That is not my goal. Well, you don't want to compare yourself to these people. That's the thing, too. Tony Robbins yeah. and all these other people. They're good to, to have as a virtual mentor and that yeah. kind of thing. But, I mean, you want to compare yourself to yourself. You want to compare yourself to yourself a day ago, a week ago, a month ago. That yeah. way you could see your, your adventure as it goes along. And you could see the progress that you've made up to that point. So that's that's really the best way to do it. Yes. Yeah, that reminds me of a book that I read not or actually listen to because I listen to books on Audible as opposed to reading. <laughs> but uh, Dan Sullivan's The Gap in the Game with uh, mm-hmm. Dr. Benjamin Hardy. And and he says that's what we want. We all too often focus on the gap and we need to start focusing on the game and the small gains, those small wins and building step by step, brick by brick. Exactly. 100%. I agree with that. Okay. As you go along here in your entrepreneur adventure, what I'd like to know is when will you think you've known you made it? When do you think you get to that point where you said, this is, we touched a little bit on this just now, but I'd like to know when you have made it to that point. What does that look like to you? That I have, I'd say, a steady stream of clients or clients that come that I have a full coaching schedule and and making a big impact and and then building my revenue. So revenue from coaching, revenue from speaking, revenue from maybe online courses. I'm not sure exactly what all this is going to look like, but that opportunity to have revenue come to you when you sleep would be the goal. That's always nice. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Reoccurring revenue, I think they call it. Yes. You want to have different kind of, streams of income coming in from different places different places yeah Yeah, so that's that's amazing yeah i think we all want to gear towards that a little bit Uh um in our entrepreneur adventure to have that goal of people buying things from you when you're asleep i mean i say (laughs) yeah they can click on your course that serves people worldwide and uh, that i think that's the idea it definitely works for me I, i like that idea i might go with you on that one (laughs) (laughs) all right that's awesome this is this is one of my favorite questions because i like getting some information for my new uh, entrepreneurs that be that's listening to the podcast but if you were to meet somebody on the street or on a zoom call or whatever it might be and they want to have the same or similar entrepreneur adventure as you are having right now yes what advice would you give them? What steps would you have them take? Get a coach that can help you create your business, your plan, create your like really identify your niche, what you want to do, who you want to serve, what that client avatar looks like, where to find them, how to do outreach, how to build your business from the ground up, so to speak, and then how to put systems in place so you it's easy. So you're not recreating the wheel every time. I know that in my first attempt several years ago, that was my, well, sure, I can do that. And then you have to 
figure out how to do that. And sure, I can do that and find a system that works, implement your system, trust the process. But I think my first piece of advice is find a coach to help mm -hmm. you. Finding a coach is definitely a great shortcut. Because when I first started, before I started coaching or having a coach or anything, those lines, yeah, I was educating myself and learning things, learning the process, uh -huh. but I was learning it from somebody who had no idea what they were, do what they were doing, me. So, <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. But Find somebody who's gone where you want to go and follow them. Pretty much. That just boils it right down to the bare essence of the whole thing. Get a coach that knows what they're doing because you don't know what you're doing more than likely. So, <laughs> yeah. And, and if you really not all coaches are created equal. So do some, do your due diligence, check them out, make sure it's a good fit for you. And there's all kinds of price rate, price points and all kinds of ways that you can work effectively together, but you need to figure out what works for you. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right, so here, here's another one of my favorite questions. Since we're talking about coaching, there's so many coaches okay. out there right now. Yeah. If I was looking for a coach, mm -hmm. and I had you, but I also had two other coaches that have similar experiences, similar price ranges, and things of that nature, what would set you apart from all these other coaches? Well, I think what sets me apart is my background and experience. Probably, this, I mean, it's everyone has a different background and experience. But my work to help you succeed and hold your feet to the fire, I think that's the challenge that we have as coaches. It's not just being nice. It's not just being a listening ear, but really saying, okay, Jesse, this is what you said you were going to do over the last two weeks since we've talked or last week since we've talked or whatever. What, what prevented you from doing that? Because your results are not where you want them. So what's holding you back? And what's how how are we going to make this work? What do you what do you need to move forward? Those kinds of questions and conversations. Yeah, accountability mm -hmm. is a big part of coaching, and a lot of coaches don't do that because they they talk to you and then they don't talk to you again until the next time they're coaching. Where a lot mm -hmm. of coaches, like probably us, don't just coach with you, but we want to keep you accountable. Hey, are you doing what you're supposed to be doing, and that kind of thing. As much as we want to be friends with you, we're really not friends. Oh. We're not here to, I mean, it's, it's a rough thing to say. We're really not here to make friends with you. We're here to hold you accountable for the goals that you have set for yourself. Yeah. If you want to get someplace, you have to take action. So if you're not taking action, we have to figure out what's preventing you. What are those excuses? What are those stories you've made up in your head that are preventing you from taking that action to move forward? Because we, if we want results, we have to do things. Right. Because we don't, if we don't do anything, we don't get results. That's just how it works. <laughs> if you want to sit on the couch all day and watch Netflix, that is a choice that you can make. But you didn't hire a coach to move you forward in your business and then do that, right? That doesn't make any sense. There's a, a famous Rush song that goes, if you choose to do nothing, you've still done it. You've still made a choice. Yes, exactly. exactly. Yes. And that's something that goes through my head a lot when I talk about something like this. Yeah. And I and mean, it, that is a choice. I, I mean, I won't fault you for that if that's the choice you want to make, but then you're not a good fit for me as a coach, right? Yeah, exactly. And a lot of times too, we are, as coaches say things that most people won't say. If you go to a friend and say, hey, can you help me with this? The, they're going to be a little bit of bias. They want, they don't want to hurt your feelings, right. or they right? So as coaches, when we see a problem or a situation, we're going to tell you what it is, good or bad. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And if you have, I mean, if you're easily offended, then maybe I'm not the right coach for you. But why do you want to spend money and pay somebody to be your friend? And you're paying a coach to ask you the, the difficult questions, challenge you, help you step out of your comfort zone and do the things you have said you want to do. So let's move forward. But the only way to move forward is to, to I can, I, I don't want to push, I want to pull. So some pull, pulling is asking those questions and saying, where do you want to be and how are you going to get there? 
and what's stopping you. Great. That's awesome. hundred percent. Thank you so much for that. You're, You're hired. Okay. Okay. All right. Good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here's my favorite question, but I did steal this from another podcast. Sorry, everybody. But what is the one question you wish I would have asked you but didn't? One uh, People always have one question that's in their head that they're always ready for, but then they never get asked that question. Do you have any idea what that may, might be for you, uh, Leslie? Boy, Jesse, I don't really – that's an interesting question. I never thought about that. I have to take a minute and uh, think maybe okay. is there a um, book – that you would recommend or something that you would advise people to. And I, I'm writing a book, so it's not my book. Okay. <laughs> and I've mentioned a couple, but recently I read or listened to Effortless by Greg McGowan. And mm. that is a super, the other book I, that I really like and had some influence over me was James Clear's Atomic Habits. Yeah, it's just, yeah, I actually own that book. That's amazing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So book recommendations, that's great. What what turned you around? What was the first book again you said? Effortless by Greg McGowan. So what turned you on to that book? I think it was just recommended to me in my Audible list. I'm not really sure, but it sounded interesting from the caption or the, the little blurb they tell you, give you. Uh, and he, that was not his, it's his second book. I did not read his first book and now I can't think of the name of it. Uh, and a a friend of mine recommended Atomic Habits to me. So what if I were to go into that book, what would I what can I expect? Just to give my listeners an idea what, what to expect if they look that book up. Effortless? Yes. Gosh, I did a couple of blurbs about it on my for my social media, and now I am drawing a total blank <laughs> about I have some notes somewhere and I've got a figure out which journal I put them in. Bear with me. Oh, here we go. The effortless state is the invert. Instead of asking why this is so hard, ask what, how or what if this could be easy. So invert the question. Challenge the assumption that there's a right, that the right way is a hard way. When you're overwhelmed, ask how can I make this how how am I now? How am I making this harder than it needs to be? And then he talks about pain being essential, uh, but how can I find enjoyable times? How can I find turn tedious tasks into meaningful rituals? How can I allow laughter and fun and let go of emotional burdens? So I can go on if you want me to. I got a couple pages here, but. That, those are the no, that's that basically sums it up right there that's really good yeah. so if anybody's no, interested I, in hearing stuff like that i'm going to actually have a link in the show notes to that book on amazon so if you all want to check that out please do so whew. all right thank you for for answering that question you weren't ready for <laughs> my pleasure <laughs> thanks for asking yeah right <laughs> sort of yeah <laughs> all right so what i'd like to do with all my guests is get a six month goal. So where do you see yourself and your business in the next six months, Leslie? Well, it's that I'm working full time in my business mm -hmm. and that I have both virtual and in-person clients. So I'm working with individuals in a group setting in business as well as individual clients online. And then I have a group, an online group and individuals. Sounds like I'm repeating myself, but I want to work with some businesses that I know that I've had established relationships, that I've got those proposals out. So I hope to close those deals and then also launch some group programs. And if people can't fit into the group program, then giving them individual attention, maybe a VIP day or two here or there. And then six months from now, I would also like to have an online course available. Oh, excellent. So how many clients do you think you'd need to be able to quit your full-time job? Have you figured that out? I have. And I have, it's a, the number would be a number in my group program and running a group program because my group is six weeks long. So running eight of those a year 
and having 10 people participate in those and then some corporate work and individual work. Fantastic. So what I'd like to do with you, Leslie, if it's okay, is I'd like to actually follow up with you in six months. Okay. All right. See if we've accomplished those goals. Is that okay? That's fine. Yeah. All right. Great. I'm looking forward to that. Okay. So this is your time to shine, Leslie. This is your time to actually advertise yourself. Tell us how we get a hold of you and all that good stuff. Okay. Ready, set, go. Well, visit my website, lesliefiorenzo.coach. And from there, you'll see a couple of different resources. You can book a conversation with me. You can download my Fearless Speaker Blueprint. You can connect with me through on social media through my website. And you can connect with me on YouTube and follow me on YouTube. I post weekly content to help people who are afraid. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll have all those major links in the show notes on Leslie's page. Okay. Leslie, thank you so much for being on the Undiscovered Entrepreneur. I really appreciate you and I look forward to seeing you in six months. Thank you. I look forward to it too, Jesse. I Aren't didn't know that was part of the deal, but that's the best. <laughs> that's the best part. That's the whole accountability, right? That's what yeah, we we're talking about exactly, earlier. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all right, school believers, make sure you stay tuned for the wrap up. All right, everybody. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> School Believers, that was Leslie. Great, great interview. Great person to talk to and just learn so much about coaching. One of the biggest things we really took out of this is surrounding yourself with the five top people that want to help you. I think that's really super important. Take stock of the people that are around you that you hang around most and what their habits are and what they actually do. And is it something that you can benefit from or not benefit from? If it's something you could benefit from, you want to hang around them. If it's something that might be negative or not sure, or they do a lot of complaining and things along those lines, maybe that's not the right people to have around you. So always take a stock of the five most people you hang around. Also, I love the fact that she set a date for herself to quit her full-time job. If you haven't seen my postings yet, I have set a date for me to quit both full-time jobs January 1st. 2025. So I'm hoping by the end of this year, I'm not hoping I will have both jobs quit <laughs> and I'll be with you scoop believers full time. I'm really looking forward to that. So let's make that happen. Also, we always, almost every one of these podcasts I talk to, fear seems to be one of the common things that come up in, in our communications and in our talks. So F-E-A-R, just like we talked about, false evidence appearing real. Not everything around you is going to kill you. <laughs> Not all fears that you have is like running away from a saber-toothed tiger or something along those lines. It's just something that's going on in our head. It's a fear. False evidence appearing real. If we get past those fears, we take the time to study and realize that it's not something that's actually going to hurt us. It's just a hurdle that we need to go over to get to where we want to be. We got to be able to get out of that comfort zone that we're in, that nice, warm, fuzzy place that we like to be in. It's comfortable. We need to get out of that if we're going to see where this, whatever goal it is, is going to take us. And the excuses. I, I It's one of my things. I, I've never really talked about it here on my podcast, but there was another podcast that I was on quite a while ago that talked about excuses being the minions of fear. We use these excuses to stay away from the fear. I, I don't want to do this because of blank or whatever that those excuses might be. They're the little guys that run around and they tell you, you don't want to do this. You This is nothing you want to do because you just, you're uncomfortable doing this. Stay with us. Don't listen to those little minions of fear. Get by them. Thank them and say, sorry, but I'm not. I'm glad you're here to help me, but I'm not listening to you because I want to be able to do this. So refuse the voices of the minions and go do what you want to do. Okay, so a little bit more about what I'm doing with my life and how things are going for me. Leslie, who you just listened to, decided to sponsor the podcast with an affiliation link for her coaching. So you probably heard in the beginning, in the very beginning, actually, 
of the opportunity she has for you for a free consultation. Please take advantage of that. I also just finished, my, like literally right before recording this, finished my intro to my course. So follow me if you want to see how this course goes. It looks so far, it's moving on quite smoothly, and I'd like you to be able to take advantage of it. So please follow me if you want to hear more about the course that I'm building, start, how to start a business. Lastly, I really need some people if to go to tuepodcast.net backslash advice to give me your best five minutes of advice for new entrepreneurs so I could put that in the advice sections of the podcast for me to help. We could help new entrepreneurs with this amazing advice. So that's what's going on with me. I'm going to keep it kind of short. You'll have a great evening and I hope you owed well. Thank you, everybody. (laughs) Bye-bye. Hello there, DJ Scoob here. And I just want to personally say thank you for listening to my program. I really hope you learned something. Tune in in two weeks to listen to another brand new entrepreneur. And remember, I can, I am, I will, and I'm doing it today. Do you find yourself altering when speaking in public? You definitely know what you're talking about, but you just can't seem to get over the horrific fear and imagining people in their underwear is just not working. Whether you're gearing up for a big presentation or just looking to improve your daily communications, Leslie Friorenzo is your go-to resource for mastering self-promotion, facing your audience fearlessly, and communicating with authority. Don't miss out on your opportunity to elevate your game. Contact Leslie Friorenzo now or go to tuepodcast.net backslash speak to step into the spotlight with confidence. Your adventure in public speaking mastery starts here and now. Don't wait to get your voice heard. Book your free consultation at tuepodcast.net backslash speak to start your adventure in speaking excellence today.